believe the U.S. should work with our enemies against ISIS. Others point out that history proves bad choices often lead to disaster in the Middle East. Case in point, the deadly terror attack against the U.S. Embassy in Lebanon 30 years ago. Here's Gary Lane with an important history lesson. During the 1980s, Lebanese terrorists backed by Iran targeted the United States. It was about 30 years ago I was here on assignment in Beirut, and we received word that the U.S. Embassy had been attacked in East Beirut by a suicide car bomber. The truck exploded less than 30 yards from the embassy building entrance. We rushed up to the location. When we got there, I'll never forget it. There was a bomb blast crater that was huge. Nearby, there were a couple of cars that were a wreck. They were still smoldering. Of course, the embassy had been damaged uh, severely. Thursday's attack on the U.S. Embassy in East Beirut may not be the last. The irony of this latest terrorist attack is that just two months ago, this embassy building was open here because it was believed to be safe. The United States, of course, learned its lessons. It put Hezbollah and its allies on the terror list. Unfortunately, what is happening now is that there are a lot of pressures in town to reconsider, uh, first of all, the backer of Hezbollah, that's Iran, and the other backer, that's the Assad regime, to reconsider them as potential partners, uh, you know, against uh, ISIS. But that would be a very serious mistake if it's done. Middle East analyst Walid Faris says that's because Hezbollah would take over Lebanon. Instead, he says the UN should pressure the group to abide by a resolution requiring it to disarm. And 30 years after the East Beirut bombing, Lebanon is dealing with yet another crisis. One and a half million Syrians now live here as refugees. That's led to overwhelming humanitarian and economic pressures. But that's not all. Unfortunately, within those refugee population, you have armed elements that are close to the Syrian regime and armed elements that are close to the jihadists of, of Syria, and we've seen many incidents over the past weeks and months, whereby from within the refugee camps, the Syrian refugee camps, you see terrorists coming, coming out. The Lebanese army battled Islamic State fighters recently in the border town of Ursal. Paris expects ISIS to target northern Lebanon, including the city of Tripoli. He believes Hezbollah will gain more control over the country as it mobilizes the Lebanese, including some Christians, to oppose ISIS. Lebanese Christians are now arming themselves to avoid the same fate as believers in Syria and Iraq. But with complicated loyalties in the Middle East, who should they trust? Ferris simply urges Christian factions to unite. It, it's not a good idea for fighting ISIS to be the friend of Hezbollah and for fighting Hezbollah to be the friends of ISIS. We, Lebanese Christians should be united with other Lebanese against all jihadists of all kinds. I know we looked at 30 years ago what about 30 years from now? What will Lebanon look like? It's going to depend a lot on what Washington will be doing in the next five to six years. Uh, if Washington continues with the same policy, I would see that the Christians in Lebanon will become a very small minority and controlled by either Hezbollah or ISIS, depending who's going to win. Their future may depend on lessons learned from Lebanon's past. Washington choices affect Middle East power, and the results can have a lasting impact on America. Gary Lane, CBN News, Beirut. It's been really interesting.